Welcome everyone to our first video, chapter one for AP Statistics. The goal for this entire course is to get you prepared for the test in May. And I'm just gonna start off by saying each one of these chapters, I'm gonna post the notes. There's also gonna be a clip notes version for the chapter that we cover, a homework section, a quiz, and a free response question for pretty much everything besides chapter one. Now. I will make this emphasis. Read the book. If this was a college class, it much like it is here, uh, that's at least how I'm going to treat this, I cannot cover every possible detail that the book covers. And it does a really good job of being both readable and informative. So I just ask you, read the book and then work on the homework problems. I know in the syllabus it lays out what are the percentages for homework versus quizzes, free responses and free response questions and tests. Uh, but really the homework is your practice area. This is where we're going to get good at this material and reading the book is a way of enhancing these video lectures. So I'm going to try to be as succinct as possible. You can follow along with these lectures as you want take notes separately, but these are just for filling you guys in for my expectations. There are some videos that are going to go over how you actually use your calculator, and I'm going to be showing you how to use a TI Inspire. If you have a different calculator, like a TI-84, that's fine too. I know how those work as well. So whatever you use, that's what we're going to do. You will also notice that in the slides, uh, I try to have a little bit of fun here with different themes. Here, we're going into the Dark Knight with the Batman family. So if you see a running list of our DC family as they just re-released uh, the Justice League movie, at least it's going to come out next year. That's a little tribute. So with chapter one, and the book is short, it's only about eight pages. What is statistics? So I'll just say this. There is no knowledge without statistics. Now, statistics may be quite possibly the least popular subject in both high school and college, and largely because most majors, regardless of what you do in college, require at least one semester of statistics. And for the, for the longest part of your math career, we are preparing you to do a algebra-based calculus track. And then on the other side is the scientific method and analyzing data and making decisions based off of information that you've gathered. And that's the real powerful tool of statistics. So it's rarely selected, but it's super powerful. I, I had this research from uh, last year. Uh, this is actually from the Forbes magazine in two, 2017. Out of the top 10 highest paying salaries, uh, if we take into account salary and job satisfaction uh, for future prospects, data scientist is number one. Uh, development operations engineer, which is a programmer, is number two. A data engineer is number three. And then if we go back all the way down to the list at number seven, a database administrator is number seven on this list of top 10 prospects. Now, I'm not going to try to say like everyone should go into statistics, but I'm going to say that if you are good at statistics, there will be a well-paying job for you. And really what it does is if you like asking questions and measuring things to see if your prediction was right or wrong or trying to make forecasts in the future, I'll be those have a little less reliability than one might think, statistics is quite powerful. So the probability is high that you will be required to take statistics in college. It just is. And what I love about statistics here is it is statistics is life explained. Things happen. Picture a social science, a physical science, uh, a, me a field of whatever you do. We collect data all the time. We see what works, what doesn't. We come up with hypotheses and conclusions, and we try to see, does this thing work? Statistics is the language that allows us to explain things of what happens in life. So everything truly known in your life is known via statistics. Now... Unfortunately, people often hear this phrase. There's lies, damned lies, and then there's statistics. And people often believe statistics can be manipulated to suggest any conclusion. And that's simply not reality. 
people are the problem, not statistics. People lie, and people use deceptive tactics to display information to make it seem like their point is either pro or con, one way or the other. It's not the data that will ever tell you wrong. So t statistics tells you what they tell us. Some use the general lack of sophistication about statistics, aka the general population, to suggest misleading conclusions. So when you see statistics, take a step back for a second and be like, why are they showing you that? Where did this come from? What are the sources here? So what are statistics? Statistics, the discipline, this class, is a way of reasoning. It's a collection of tools and methods designed to allow us to understand the world. Data, which is plural, this is the plural of datum, a single statistic, are values with context. We do not just put numbers in a spreadsheet or a table and call those statistics. We always need to paint a picture and provide context for what are data. Statistics, the plural, are particular calculations derived from data and the conclusions that are drawn from those calculations. And that's all what we're going to be doing in the second semester. But first, we have to think of what are the two different ways we can gather data. So I'm going to play a short video that I think is a fascinating way of looking at life and how if you understand the concept of statistics, it just opens up the world. And if you don't have an understanding of statistics, you kind of see everything in this one kind of muted tone. So let's play the video and then we'll come right back. So after watching that video, this kind of sound rich environment versus this monotone world is really seeing, being able to identify the study of variability, how things change and how we can measure those changes and compare them in before and after realities. And what statistics really are about is this idea of variation, variation and change, how things alternate. The beautiful thing about statistics is that it encompasses this error of life. So if you think of a science class, all measurements are imperfect. Since those measurements have variation that is unavoidable or not immediately known to us, you are not the exact same height and weight every single day. In fact, if you step on the scale in the morning, and then you step on the scale at noon, and then you step on the scale at night, you're going to have three different weight measurements. So which one is the right value? How do you figure that out? We have to look at data over time and see those trend lines. So you might have weight data that fluctuates like this, throughout any given day for a week. But if we can see that trend line of all of those data, we can start seeing patterns that are showing themselves. So st statistics is our best attempt to understand the real, imperfect, varying, diverse world in which we live in. 
And this is why we study statistics. So even though you're unlikely to pursue statistics as a field of study, you will be exposed to statistics throughout your life. After this class, I hope you will recognize and be better able to interpret the statistics that you see. Now, this might be a little dated, but if you've seen one of these car commercials that are saying, oh, we can predict the right height, and it somehow turns into this curve that some might, some of you might have seen, that's a normal curve. Uh, I think this is a uh, Carvana or true, true car commercial that you can see this price average, this normal model that shows this range of prices. And each of these data points means something. If you think back to the primaries that were happening almost a year ago, we're looking at these comparisons between different political candidates and who was favored with what. How home buying, if you want to go home advisor, what, what type, type of mortgage should you have? What are costs that you should be spending on home ownership and other things like that? Like statistics will be around you if you are able to just open your eyes and see. So the last little bit for this video, your book likes to go through the model of think, show, and tell. And your book suggests there are, th there are three not so simple steps to doing statistics right. The first is think first and know where you're headed and especially why. Then show is about the mechanics of doing the calculation, calculating statistics and making graphical displays of data. And we'll get into that idea of showing what you're seeing and then using words to describe it. And then the last bit is tell. Tell us what you learned. You must, and I say must, explain your results so that someone else, like your Nana from the old country or your, your brother or sister who's in fifth grade, can understand your conclusions. Do not assume that I know what you're talking about. Use words to explain your thinking. It's super important. Now, I'm gonna expand on these three steps into five not quite so simple steps to doing statistics. So in terms of those think ideas, first, decide what you want to know and draw a picture. You're gonna get sick of me saying this, if you represent what you are trying to find with a picture, with a graph, it is going to accentuate what you're looking for. Next, we're gonna determine the appropriate test statistic that will assess the data. So that includes ensuring we have met the conditions necessary for that test statistic. I'm saying these words, and this is all in chapter 17 through 25. <laughs> We will get to that. That's like unit five, six, and seven. That's down the way with these types of test statistics. So with show, we will find the values of the test st statistic, which is a calculated statistic determined by the data and the likelihood, AKA the probability of that data statistic. And then the last bit in this tell idea, we're gonna decide what the statistic tells you and then we are gonna write our conclusion. That is what we are going to do with statistics. So let's get, so let us get started. So as you can see, statistics is much more than simple calculations. It's not just spreadsheets. It's not just data tables. It's putting life in context of measurement. You will be asked to do a lot of writing for every question you're required to answer. I am not going to accept simple numbers. If you think you're really good at math because math is X equals a number, that's not gonna fly here. So I really wanna emphasize right up front that we need to be able to write our thoughts down clearly. Lastly, statistics starts with data. So we start with a discussion about data. And that ends our first video. Welcome to AP Statistics.